Hey everybody, it's Vaughn. I'm with Prosper on the Live Long Digital show today. And today we're talking about resilience. Now, if you are struggling, if you're like, ah oh, man, banging your head against a brick wall or any other form of wall, you need to be on this show. We're going to cover a couple of major topics to help you get started, to help you stay motivated and to understand the steps that you need to take to take the next step on the journey towards the success you want. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I brought you Van Lidikant. Van, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here today, Prosper. Absolutely. And you're looking good. Thank you for showing up. Now, those that are watching right now, Van is the CEO and founder of the N Tribe. But he's not only that, he is the four times former world professional ballroom dancing representative of Australia. He's also known as a dancing entrepreneur. He's also an owner of two companies, the CEO of N-Tribe and an investor in a Swedish tech uh, startup that is called Cubimo. And he's also the founder of a mission for millions that is a not-for-profit that actually helps um, lift children out of extreme water poverty. Now, he's a man of many accomplishments and through all of this, there's been a lot of resilience that has um you know helped shape his career because now he is an international speech speaker and he's also coached clients in over 30 uh, countries and has got tens of thousands of people that actually access his trainings and he's been interviewed on youtube by over uh, uh over 300 000 times and his chief aim in life is actually helping people to be um, the best in their life ever. You know, he actually believes that money is not wealth and spending your days doing what you love and getting paid for it and having the time to do what you want is actual wealth. And I believe this is what we also believe as entrepreneurs that we need to be, do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. So if we're enjoying what we're doing, um, it actually brings the best out of us. And over the years, fun has actually worked with and he's learned from the best of, you know, personal development industry, um, the likes of Bob Proctor and his step towards success. Now, Van, I could go on and on and on about your accolades. Could you just let us know a little bit about yourself and, um, you know, what brought you to be who you are today? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. It's awesome to be here. And I hope that anyone that's listening uh, gets a little slice of inspiration and realizes that we're not different. It's just we get choices that we have to make and then we have to uh, to work hard towards what we want and be very resilient in that process. And my background, I, when I was uh, 19, I failed school. I didn't do very well at it and I did a try, but I always say that I had to sort of cheat to fail. Like I just wasn't a good student. But when I was 19, I decided to hire a coach. That coach helped me to understand how to achieve and set goals. And so what I decided to do was very against the grain, which I guess a lot of entrepreneurs are like. Uh, they, they see different things. They don't want a traditional career path. They don't want to go the nine to five. I was like, I definitely don't want to be death by cubicle, right? <laughs> and so I uh, decided I was going to pursue uh, a, a, a passion of mine, ballroom dancing. And I wanted to do that and travel the world and to go and see great exotic lands and to meet different people and to challenge myself going from absolute raw beginner to one of the you know top in the world in that sense. And I didn't start off wanting to do that. I just wanted to do it because I wanted to do it. There was no real grand reason except traveling with a pretty girl on my arm, which became my wife. And in that process was all of the mindset, right? Like learning how to do it. I had to fund it. So I started a business and I went into real estate and I applied all the principles that are important to create success but I channeled it towards that outcome of ballroom dancing. And once that career finished a few years ago, I then decided to uh, take what I'd learned and turn that into, you know, speaking and coaching and, and programs like that to take around the world to teach people that they could do whatever their heart desired, that it didn't matter if they had the money, they didn't, if they didn't have the talent or the resources, uh, or they've never even been in the industry before that they could absolutely do it because I found that, the principles in that world translate into business, they translate into sport, they translate into relationships because the principles are the same. Absolutely. And uh, all, 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 the, all, the, all the best um, to your future endeavors there. Now, 
Vaughn, one thing that stops a lot of people dead in their tracks is a lot of fear. Now, you went yeah. into this whole ballroom dancing and traveled around the world, did not know anyone where you were going. Um, how do you address fear, um, you know, as a person, as an individual, when you embark on activities? Because if it was easy, everybody else would do it. Oh, yeah. That's a, actually a really good question. Um, I think working with lots of different types of people and asking them what's holding them back. I, I do still believe fear is one of the main things that holds people back from endeavoring or trying new endeavors, I should say. And so I think there's a good old saying, you know, fear is false evidence appearing real. Um, there's also a very explicit version of that, which I may not use today, but fear essentially is something that won't disappear. I think if we understand what it is, we can use it as a fuel. Uh, most people's problem is that they're, uh, they're trapped by ignorance they're not aware that that fear is something that won't actually disappear but if we face it if we use it as a fuel to go where we want and we use faith as like a shield and we actually reach deep within ourselves we will realize that we have a capacity and a power to overcome any obstacles that we face and i think in the beginning stages uh if we have a compelling reason why we're going to do something beyond our current circumstance that is enough to just get us going. And most people are trying to find like the answers up front. They want to know with certainty that they will get exactly where they're going with, you know, a high degree of success. Um, and unfortunately that's not how the universe works, right? It's, uh, it's acting in faith. It's knowing that the only thing you and I can take is the first step, right? We can only take one step at a time, not 99 steps. And we won't know those other steps up front. So at the beginning stages, it's more about asking, why do you want to do what you want to do? And then are you willing to do what it takes, not what's convenient? That's probably the most important question that someone should ask themselves. If they're willing to do what it takes and not what's convenient, they can have anything they want. Absolutely. The willing to do what it takes aspect, um, you know, paints a picture around the passion that you have, um, you know, in, in, in whatever you've embarked on, especially the dancing, let alone there was a beautiful lady that was hanging on your arm. <laughs> Not sure if. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Great accessory right there. So you, you think that if somebody is not passionate about what they're doing, they would not succeed in um, getting ahead um, the way that you have. Um, yeah, I think, I think um, if, you, if, if people are listening to this and they're, they're probably listening to other things as well, they're going to hear certain themes in, in personal development and in mindset training. And passion is, is something that's talked about a lot. It is absolutely something that you have to have, meaning that passion's got to come from deep within. It can't come from an external source. You can't get it from your wife. You can't get it from your partner. You can't get it from your work colleagues, although that plays a very, very important factor in resilience and being persistent, um, who, who you surround yourself with. Everything comes from the inside, right? Like, so passion is the fuel that gets you going. And then purpose is what gives you meaning to what you're doing. So once you've got the passion and you've got that fuel lit up within you uh, or, or you've got that fuel to get you going, then you've really got to crank into why you're doing what you're doing because you're going to have moments where the passion is just not enough, right? Like I had days when I was turning up and, and at the moment, you know, my company, uh, The End Tribe, we focus on uh, helping connect people to each other and build relationships and, you know, to, to engage each other in ways that can profit each other's businesses. and beyond the passion to build a business successfully, you really have to be resilient. Like you have to be persistent. And there's a good saying that persistence beats resistance. And what that really means is that there are going to be days you don't feel like doing the work and you may be feeling low in terms of passion, right? You may be feeling like, ah, today's just, ah, I can't be bothered to do this work or why do I have to stay up late again? And if I found that the most successful people in life, the ones that are the happiest, the ones that are doing something that means something, they're driven by something beyond just passion because passion sometimes, like I said, can, can burn out a little bit, but if there's a compelling reason, there's like a purpose behind what you're doing, a real meaning to what you do, it will triumph over any adversity. Absolutely. Well, one of the things that you also mentioned and one of the things that you believe totally goes against societal norms, you actually believe money is not wealth. 
okay? And that um, when you spend your days doing what you absolutely love and you get paid for it, um, you know, having the time uh, to do what you want is actual true wealth. Can you just break that down a little bit for that one person who is brought up to think the more money you have, um, the wealthier you, the wealthier, the wealthy you actually are as a person. Oh, absolutely. And I understand sometimes it, when you first hear these concepts, you, you might be like, I've never heard of this before. This is a bit strange. These guys fell out of a tree, right? Um, don't let that stop you. I think the best thing I've ever heard about new ideas, especially when it comes to wealth, is that don't accept the idea, don't reject it, and don't neglect it. Entertain it, play with the idea. And you'll probably find that you'll hear it and go, well, you know, that makes sense, but I don't understand it. And that's when most people criticize it and they reject it. And what we're saying is that any information, go back and listen to it again. Listen to some of the books Prosper recommends because as you go through this a few more times, you'll start to see that these ideas not only make sense, but they're true because truth resonates with you. So when it comes to wealth, wealth is absolutely, in my opinion, having the time to do what you want to do. Because if you have money, you have options. And most people are trying to run around going, how do I earn more money? And they go get a second or third job. That will just lead to a very early death, right? We have to understand how money works. Money is earned, especially in business, by providing service and service beyond your own physical presence. So it means that you're helping people beyond just you turning up to do the job. And so when we look at money in that sense, and we understand that the more value we provide versus the cash someone's paid for you, you will get rich. And when that happens, we start to have more options. Now, I'm a belief, I'm a belief that most people want to earn lots of money. They, they, they do at some level want to earn maybe a million or more. But I often question that and say, look, that can come at a high cost, meaning that you don't have the time to be with your family. Or you don't have the time to enjoy that money or you don't have the time to really take a seat back and do some of the things you like, maybe a hobby or a skill that you want to learn just because you want to learn it, right? Like dancing. And so you have to be very mindful of what you're trading your life for. And if you're mindful of that, then you'll start to be guiding your decisions in a different light. And so we want to understand that wealth is having the time to do what we want to do and we spend that time doing what we love to do. To me, that is a life that's very rich. It also means that we have relationships that we treasure, right? We're not, we're not just engaged with people we don't like. We're not with the shitty coworkers, excuse my French. We're with people that we actually love being with. You know, we're in a healthy relationship with our loved one. We have a good, healthy body that we love. We don't not like our body, you know? We're uh, physically looking after ourselves, doing activity. Wealth is that well-rounded concept. Uh, getting rich is referring to monetary value, right? Like it's turning up and doing the job and what we're engaged in. And the two go together, but most people have the equation backwards. They're out there just trying to get money from any way they can and not understanding how it truly works. And the first starting point for anyone is making a decision on how much you'd want to earn in the next year and then figuring out the vehicle you're going to deploy to earn that money. You keep referring to doing what um, you love. I really want us to pull back the curtain on that one a little bit because what if I Sounds love good. what if what if I love just eating pizza and drinking beer and also playing cards against humanity? I don't think anyone would pay me for that. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh well. Let me say, just flip on the creative switch, Prosper. I could think of a few ways you could do it. It would be weird, but it, it could work. But let let let, let me let me put it like this. That's true. What you're saying is, well, everybody says, do what I love, do what I love. And I've thought about this one a lot too. It's like, well, if I just did what I love, I would really just travel. I would travel all the time. And, uh, and, and I often ask this to people. I'll, I'll say that. What would you do if you had, first of all, the, the, the sort of questions you ask determine the quality of your life, right? So if you ask a better question, you'll get a better answer. So a question to ask is like, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? A second question would be, what would you do if you had unlimited resources and unlimited time and you could do anything you wanted? And the questions that people typically respond to me by, and I've asked this to a lot of people, and this, this includes the barista who might make my coffee. I'll just ask them. And they look at me like, where did you fall off the tree from? What planet are you from? And they'll often say, well, I would travel. I, I would just travel. Oh, I'd love to just travel. I say, great. Okay, you've traveled for a year. What would you then do? Oh, I don't know. And you see, so that's the block. So when someone says, I would just eat pizza, cards against humanity, what they're really saying is they don't know. 
because they've never actually asked the question because that's they would that would be a fantasy it'd be something they'd like to do let me tell you if they actually did that for about six months they would not feel very fulfilled and so that's really the question is what would i love to do that would make me fulfilled and that starts to give you a different type of answer and yeah for sure if you've never thought about this stuff before then go out and fantasize go i would travel i'd buy a car i'd get my wardrobe done get my house done but let me tell you fulfillment isn't in those things but enjoy them the next stage from that is like what would fulfill me absolutely great stuff so searching for that fulfillment um would then lead to the answers that uh would culminate in you actually being doing and having a happier existence right so yeah. you keep referring to this um statement of where you fell off from because right now somebody's <laughs> just sitting on the edge of their chair just going all right these guys all look sharp they've got books behind them um what is it that they are reading or where do i get all this information as well you did hint um a little bit earlier on about having mentors in your life just walk us through the importance of having some sort of guidance on somebody who's been where you want to be um that can actually help you be do and have a happier existence oh i love that be do and have right that's from goethe a 17th century a german philosopher that is beautiful that 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 thought alone be do have changed the entire western world for anyone who doesn't know it's one of the most amazing ways of being in life be before you can do it before you can have it well um there are different types of people for different things but let's put it in a very simplistic fashion if you wanted to become a professional golfer you would hire a coach to help you become a professional golfer it would be foolish to go to youtube and watch videos only and then go to the range and teach yourself that would be a very slow process now don't get me wrong a lot of professionals actually start that way but they don't become professionals that way you see so the starting point is different to the end point so if you really want to become a weapon a freaking ninja at what you do like very very good and fast this is the key fast hiring a coach is the way you do that because they are going to shortcut the learning so let's say it takes you three years to get from where you are to somewhere where you want to be like let's just say a, a goal and that could be a monetary goal or a physical health goal or a sporting goal um, a coach is going to help shortcut that because they've been through the process, right? Like they understand that what's ahead, they've trodden the path and they'll, they will warn you and they'll help you get foresight on the problems that are going to come. So that generally is an investment of time and money. Coaches don't do their work for free because they know generally a good coach knows what they do works fast. Um, so that's one avenue. Another way is mentors. Mentors are different. Mentors are more about a relationship. So a very quick way to get a mentor is not, hmm. I want to become more motivated and, and successful. So I'm going to go and ask someone to, you know, give me what I need to become successful. You actually have to have a very different mentality when it comes to mentors. It's a giving mentality, meaning what can you give to them? Now, this is where most people fall down. They think I have nothing to offer. That's not true. All you have to ask the question is how can I help you? And by asking that people will tell you. And, and the next part of this is that, well, who am I saying that to? Well, a good mentor is somebody in a field, that you want to maybe be in. So for example, if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you could call up CEOs of companies. Now I didn't say call up like, you know, the janitor in the company, call the owner and say, and, and ask it or build a relationship, start the first process of that. And sort of like if you're dating a nice pretty lady or a man, the first thing you do on a date is not ask for the sex, right? <laughs> that's a bit too soon, right? You, you, that's asking for someone to be your mentor. What do you do? You date them, you nurse them, you coax them, you entice them. That's how you start a relationship with the mentor. Now, mentor is a, is, a, is a free thing, but it's given by time and relationship. And in that, somebody then, you know, you maybe come to the point where they, you ask them, look, would you be my mentor? Or, you know, would you help me with some things? And it's normally over a short period of time. It's not over like a lifetime, uh, like we might see in movies. Um, and so the other way to start this process after a coach, a mentor is you start the process yourself of self-help or self-development or self-growth, like what you've done, what I've done. You grab a book by one of the people maybe you can't access because they've put their ideas in that book. Now, here's the crazy thing. Those books often are the best information that they have. And here's our, here's our challenge, you and I. This is my challenge too. You read the book, you take a piece of information and you put it to work. And that's actually the starting point for most people is you read the book and you don't go, what a lovely book. 
and then go back to normal life. You read the book, you take one idea and you go, how can I implement that? If you do that every day, I guarantee your life will look so different. People will say you fell out of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they would hear the noise from miles They're away. From miles. <laughs> Absolutely. That was well put out there because um, I would like to just add that we're here to leave, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute. And how many people mm. don't really live their lives and the learning you learn from other people's mistakes or your own mistakes, but some mis mistakes are really expensive. And that's why <laughs> some people put them in a book. And the contribution part is what Vaughn is actually really doing right now, contributing all that is learned and just really helping you figure out how you too um, can be, do and have. Now, now that you've already opened up the Pandora's box and maybe somebody is really, you know, um, <laughs> wanting to feel how it feels to, to fall from that uh, <laughs> proverbial tree, how can people get a hold of you there, Vaughn, so they could learn a little bit more of what you do and how you can possibly help them? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm very accessible. I really love what I do. And so the door is open if anyone wants to reach out and I can point you in the right direction uh, in any way. You can visit my website, um, or uh, and I'm sure there might be a link around here somewhere. And that's it. Just go to my website, connect with me on social media through Facebook or LinkedIn and uh, shoot me a message. It'd be great to hear from you. Absolutely. Just one other thing there, Vaughn. Um, you've got a few books that you have behind you there. What one book would you just reach out to and recommend to our audience as a starting point uh, for them to start their uh, proverbial drop from the tree? Yeah, the starting point. That's a very good question because it's always like, what's the top book? Uh, I think the, one of the best books to start with is As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. Absolutely. I was going to reach out. Um, <laughs> we'll just, we'll let the universe decide. <laughs> <laughs> James Allen really is tops. Um, you know, Amazing book. Yeah. Great stuff. And um, thank you so much for that. Now we are sort of coming to the close of the second mm -hmm. month of 2018, which pretty much uh, still puts us in the first quarter of the year. Uh, we still have our resolutions still fresh painted on the walls, but some people are letting go of that rope right now. What sort of two minute or I mean, what sort of two word um, advice can you give to people that are, you know, on the start of, you know, either a personal development journey or a business entrepreneurial journey, or they just want to really start being an ex exceptional ballroom dancer? What sort of... <laughs> <laughs> what sort of words of advice can you leave with them today, uh, Vaughn? Uh, well, don't quit because you're going to die. So get on with it. Like, seriously, people have just, they waste time. Like, oh, I can do that tomorrow or next year. It's like, no, you can't. You, have, you and I, we don't know how long we got. We really don't. And so every moment really is a gift. And it's so important that any opportunity, if you're listening to this, you are already separating yourself into a very small percentage of people. And that means that you have an advantage and something you can implement and use. And I just say, go for it. Because I think the greatest risk in life is to take no risk at all. And so most people are scared of taking a risk. The biggest risk is literally not doing anything with what you hear. So go forward, prosper, rock it out. And, uh, you know, because one day we are going to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Vaughn, I can't thank you for your time and your expertise today on the show. I thank mean, you. obviously, if you're watching this show right now, you have gotten a few nuggets from the international speaker himself. And he's actually coached in um, clients in over 30 countries. I don't know where you are tuning in from right now. And he's also had tens of thousands of people that are accessing his trainings that I'm going to be putting at the bottom uh, links there and has also been viewed on YouTube by all over um, 3 million times. And like you have noticed, his chief aim is actually helping people to be, do, and have a happier existence. Now, Vaughn, thank you so much for your time today. Prosper, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for listening. Absolutely.